Hello YouTube, Marielle here. Today I would like to talk about letting go of my daughter. And this is a rather difficult one for me. I'm truly realizing that what the wolf has done to our children is even more cruel than the abuse he has put me through over the last two decades. As an adult, despite my naivety and lack of experience, I still had a background of small life lessons, teachings from my parents and grandmother, and morals to fall back on, which enabled me to wonder and question some of the decision makings and action of the wolf, even if I kept a lot of those questions to myself and really didn't confront him nearly as enough as I, as I should have done over the years because I was just too busy questioning myself and doubting myself and not having en enough confidence in myself and in my own knowledge. Whereas our children never had a clean background to refer to, the person they loved, adored, cherished and trusted the most, who is no one else than their own father, basically have been deceitful their entire life with them. And that's all they've known. The wolf has been grooming them since they were possibly seven or eight years old to view the world his way by constantly undermining every single one of my efforts. He taught them his own skills about how to acquire power over people through manipulation by using me me, the children's mother, as nothing more than a guinea pig. My children, just like myself, were slowly groomed to accept the unacceptable. They were groomed slowly to feel comfortable with extreme malicious behaviors. Behaviors I, I have to say, I unknowingly or unwittingly must have appeared to be approving of even if it was by default, because I was so unaware of the grand scheme which was at play, which was taking place. The children themselves, they were too young to know better, and I was too inexperienced and too naive myself to know better. Me, myself, it is only recently that I am slowly coming to understand the full impact of what was happening right under my nose. For example, I now realize that my self-imposed isolation also played a big role into depriving my children with an alternative outside source of reference when it came to appropriate adult behavior between couples. There was no friends or family members to help bring in a balance in the whole equation. Looking back from my point of view, I strongly feel like my isolation worked in my favor simply because it kind of helped to severely limit the wolf's ability to establish eventually a vicious and potentially disabilitating smear campaign against me, you know. Uh, by not having friends, by not having family members, my own family members around me, or even his family members are around, you know, um, it really prevented him to use all of those people to turn them against me. But I also understand that despite that, I still can't claim victory because it is obvious that it's the children who, who ultimately lost the chance and opportunity to establish a different way of seeing things when they were younger. In what I just said here so far, I would like to point out how every time I try to analyze outcomes of situations that have occurred to see what I could have done or said differently to prevent some of the things that have transpired, well, guess what? I always end up facing the exact same virtual brick wall, which goes like this. Damned because I did, and damned because I didn't. 
and um, it's perpetual. It's always like this. I I just don't seem to be able to escape that that theme, you know, while I'm dealing with uh, with the wolf. There never seemed to be um, a complete win-win outcome for me in my dealing with the with the wolf, and this only just reinforced my newly gained understanding that for anyone who comes across and those people and who are ever able to identify them for who and what they are the best thing is really just to to stay away from them run away from them avoid them and obviously when it comes to the workplace I don't have a <laughs> I don't have any advice but I guess if if it is at all possible the best way is just to refuse to deal with them stay away from them as much as possible because whoever even choose to deal with them will always leave behind a few bleeding feathers no matter what there's always going to be some loss somewhere i think as for my children now that i've gained a better understanding of what was happening right under my nose i can just imagine how stressful and exhausting it must have been for them to have to try to figure out almost every single time their father was around what was right what was wrong and what was good and what was bad morally and in every other way as an adult i know how difficult it is or it has been for me to deal with the extreme two different sets of behaviors from my wolf where he would constantly tell me how he worshiped the the ground that i walked on and then at the very same time he would do things that pointed straight to the opposite direction of what he was saying and as an adult i was just left feeling confused and doubting my own common sense in that kind of situation what chances did my children have absolutely none also i do have to say that i truly could not have comprehended and fully grasped the full impact of those constant mixed messages on their brain function it's only now that i can see how being under such strenuous effort at such a young age to have to choose between good and bad behavior from people from both sets of parents between me and 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 and, and their father just you know how traumatic this um, this must have been for them you know to traumatic enough i think even to induce or trigger any type of personality d- disorder um in them even though they were probably not born like this of course i'm not an expert and i will not want to come across as if i dismiss similar side effects on children who have been abused physically I really just merely would like to point out that children who have been exposed to covert abusers like my wolf should definitely be considered to be severely abused even if they were just spoiled rotten and just given just about anything and everything they ask for because well, this is how the wolf that that this has been his his technique by constantly putting temptations in their way and also you know to make poor decisions and constantly uh giving them what they want by you know um allowing the children to make decisions even if the decisions were obviously not in the best interest of the child and the child being young not being at an age where they can choose better for themselves if you understand what i mean and and also I I now totally believe that this is a way that triggers uh personality dysfunction in 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 those children you know by teaching them the wrong thing reinforcing bad behavior and all those things that comes with it I mean my children are happy they really are thinking that their father is the best father ever and is the coolest ever but I as an adult and i hope you would agree with me they are being misled they are being abused anyway today 
Monday 22nd of May 2017. After spending an entire week trying to get someone, and I do mean anyone, from the sober living facility uh, my daughter was in and establish some contact and some conversation with them, after trying for almost a week, I just managed today at around 5 uh, p.m. to speak to the person in charge of the sober living facility. And and that's when she told me that the wolf picked our daughter up last Saturday. And I was still surprised. And I suppose that's because I was holding on to the hope, knowing that there was still enough room for me to maneuver to help my child. And there would have been enough room for me to, to, to do something. It would have been enough time not to come up with a solution if they had collaborated with me rather than believe whatever I now suppose my own child must have been saying against me. And I still can't understand how those two facilities failed me and failed my daughter so, so, so badly. I have no other choice but to believe that somehow, um, you know, um, my own child, my own daughter, must have said things about me, which will not be surprising because this is not the first time she's done something like that. Um, and, you know, adding to, to the wolf uh, appearance and then calm ways and soothing presence and all of those things and his soft voice and everything, it all kind of conspired to give, to make those people believe somehow that I was the abuser and my child needed to be protected from me, I think. And that's why they decided they were going to block me and not answer my calls. It's very hard for me to, to, to understand and to accept what they've done. If really, I had the money, I'll find a way to, 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 to sue them and get some answers. Uh, I've never been this kind of person to 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 even consider this kind of thing. But uh, it's not just frustration. I just can't understand how they could have failed me and failed my daughter. Already last week when I went to see her, she had already lost weight. And I just don't know whether they know that my daughter is actually a meth addict. I just don't know and that information the rehab center had it how could they not have I'm just lost I'm confused so yes I'm very concerned about the well-being of my child and yet I have no other choice but to let her go and all I can do is just pray for her and keep thinking positively about her well-being I can't even approach her in in any way or even try to see her during the day you know, when my when the wolf is actually uh, out to work. Because I know she's capable of accusing me of anything which could get me into any kind of troubles. Um, already last time we saw each other, she was hollering like I was trying to murder her. She has become extremely good at using the same techniques as her, as her father used on me throughout the, the years. You know, she's very good at probing or baiting until she gets a reaction out of me and it doesn't matter which kind of reaction it is it doesn't matter whether it's a positive negative or mild reaction it doesn't matter at all because she's very good at using those reactions to either reinforce the perverted image she has of me or she uses my reaction as an excuse to justify her poor choices or again she uses you know, I've seen her use uh, my reaction as an excuse to be mean, to be cruel, to reject me um, or to push me away. And the worst is when she actually um, starts throwing absurd uh, um, accusations at me. The accusation technique um, is the worst, I think, because it makes me instinctively want to clear out any possible misunderstanding. And for sure, this, I, this is actually when I get hurt the most because um, I get frustrated and confused when she completely refuses to either explain herself or she refuses to hear what I have to say. All of which I do know is just a ploy to, to, to usually prevent me from figuring something out. It's a way of throwing me off the scent of something. 
and understanding something. And despite knowing this, this technique still destabilizes me when it, when it is used by her, you know, not by her father, but used by her because I believe that every time she refuses to give me the opportunity to clear any misunderstanding, she just ends up believing her own lies. I truly believe that after a while, she does believe whatever she accuses me of. And, um, and those are lies which keeps piling up on top of the old lies and on top of whatever her father is making her believe about me, which just add to reinforce a twisted reality of everything, of all the situations and all of what happened and, and how she perceived me and how she perceived even what her father does to me that she's aware of and that she has witnessed and then that she has seen. But anyway, in a couple of days, my daughter is turning 18. So my time as a legal guardian and my, and my time as, as, a, as, as the rational parent in her life is kind of over, really. I guess all I have to look forward to now is, as a parent is just to wait around to pick up the pieces, you know, when they're going to start cracking and falling all over the place. And this makes me very mad and this makes me very sad and this makes me very scared. And also there is just no place for me to hide from the reality that as far as the wolf is concerned, he has won the large part of, of the war he has been waging against me for the last two decades. There is no denying that he has successfully se separated me from our children. There is no denying that he has successfully led our, our children to choose very difficult paths for, them, for themselves. There is no denying that he has successfully eradicated my positive teachings and my positive, positive influence on our children. And on top of it all, he has also managed to manufacture and produce for himself the perfect sob story. Because you see, from now on, he will be able to blame me from, for raising our children with dreadful uh, consequences. Also, whichever way my children's stories um, end, the wolf will always be able to either scapegoat me forever or look like the hero. Either way, it doesn't matter, you know, whether they, they make it or they don't. He will be able to milk it for his own benefit. You know, literally looks like he has been able to to ensure himself a steady emotional supply, you know? The supply apparently that he needs to survive and to feel whole and to feel the smartest and to feel like in control. I know I have to try very hard to let go. I know that. And I know I have to try to not think about what other people will think of me. Um, but it hurts. It stings. I swear, it feels like my pride does bleed just like my heart. And I feel for my children. And I am mad at them too, even though I know it's not their fault. But I can't help feeling angry as well at them. <laughs> I know it's not rational. I can't help it. I just wish they could have resisted somehow. I don't know how. I just wish they could have resisted. And I can't help but be scared for their well-being and their future. And I really, really hate that I have nothing more at my disposition. You know, I have nothing more left than faith and prayers when it comes to them and all I can do is pray that they won't kill themselves <laughs> and that they won't hurt other people <sighs> I 
And all I can do Or that they won't go to jail, they won't end up in jail. Those are the only most basic ex expectations I now have for my children's future. And never, never in a million years, not even two years ago, I could have imagined this is how my parenting years will end up looking like and feeling like. 